Alright guys and girls, welcome back. Um, I don't know if I have enough, but we're going to see if we can open up the door to uh, the Count's place. Oh wait, I forgot we have to actually just walk up there. Uh, let's go back. Stop here. Make our way up. Alright. Let's do it. Now, from what I know. Oh crap, what the hell? Am I lost? Yeah, I am. I gotta go through from town. From what I know, the, uh,. The vampire's castle is gonna, gonna be hard to navigate. So I think it might be a good place to level. That's why I'm gonna probably save it for last. But I wanna see if I can at least open the door. If I have enough crystals thingies. Cause I think we needed six, but not 100% on that. Okay, so welcome back. We're about to face off with Victor and Victoria for the second round. Okay, thank you. Save it. Let's do it. Come on, I don't want to hear it again. Once upon a tough pernay, those huh? she was taken in and raised by the orthodoxy soon after her birth. Oh wait, what? This is new. Yeah, this is different. She simply waited upon her inevitable demise, all the while gasping in pain and despair. Then, a chance meeting changed her life. On death's door and abandoned. She was found by the Grand Marshal, who wandered the lands after renouncing the orthodoxy himself. He took her to Yoyana, nursed her to health, then brought her to this realm for treatment. My father did this? How can you not know? As his daughter. He never spoke a word of this. Were it not for his lordship, 
Her fragile life would have soon been snuffed out. I was pulled from my studies on the Earth Crystal to treat her. With the help of my father, who studied the amplification of white magic, she survived. But the treatment was not yet perfected, and she was left with terrible side effects. She suffers from periodic fits, which cause her body to writhe in pain. Her dread of these fits eventually caused her to lose all control over her emotions. But perhaps the most significant side effect was the cessation of her physical growth. Since my father and I began her treatment here, she has always had the childlike form you see. If she is in such pain, how can you force her to use her powers? <sighs> I do not need you to tell me that. After the death of my father, I took over his research and have poured my heart into healing her body. But I could not relieve her agony, no matter how I tried. Each time her tiny form is racked with pain, I ask myself, knowing the result, would I still have intervened as I did? But ever is my answer the same. As long as I draw breath, she is both my crime and my redemption. <laughs> Forgive me. Back to my old... Now, let's... Stop it! What is the point of us fighting? The point, you ask? Hmm. Because you disgust me, Idea. Oh. That is reason enough to fight? No. I wish to see your corpses flayed before me, fools! Okay. Hopefully we should... We can take them. I have a feeling they're gonna be pretty tough. Super tough. Alright. Oh my gosh, I forgot to do something. Okay, so I died. I'm gonna try and level a little more before we continue. But I wanna at least see, uh, open this place up if I can. And, uh, just to show you, uh, if there's any cinematic when you open it. Did you hear that sound? I believe the gate is finally unlocked. That was anticlimactic. He could have at least included a flash, a bang, or a puff of smoke. <laughs> Let's head in before Ringabel has a chance to flap his gums again. They all have a sort of forlorn look to them. All right, we're in the vampire castle. Um, I will see you guys in a bit. I'm gonna see if I can level up a lot. So yeah. Uh, see you in a second. All right, guys, welcome back. Um, I decided to go to Durosos and switch it up. His wife was sure an attractive one. Oh, and it says something under the painting. Lester, eldest son of the House of De Rosso, future clergyman of the Crystal Adventists and Cardinal of the Crystal Orthodoxy, born in the land of Eternia on a cold winter's day. So, that's his mother, not his beautiful young wife. And that little baby is Lord De Rosso. Clergyman? Of the Crystal Adventists? Damn. Is something the matter, Agnes? The Crystal Adventists were the predecessors of the Crystal Orthodoxy. It is now known as the Old Faith, but it hasn't been practiced in over 2400 years. How could he have been a member of the Adventist clergy? I don't know, maybe he's a vampire? According to this portrait, Lord De Rosso is incredibly old, even ancient. Yes, indeed. For I was born of these frozen lands in a time some 2,400 years from this day. 
Oh crap. Doroso, don't do that. <laughs> I was but an infant, as you I like how they're just so calm that he this just appeared. Is a reproduction, however. The original was lost long ago to fire. And what of the part that reads, clergyman of the Crystal Adventists and Cardinal of the Crystal Orthodoxy? Hmm. Yes. As Wind Vestal, you would be expected to take interest in such matters. But here I delve into the matter of the old faith and the orthodoxy. Allow me to tell of the founding of this land. As you may well know, this land had long been ruled by the Crystal Orthodoxy. However, 15 years passed, the Templar rose up and occupied their lands. Thus was the Duchy of Eternia born, or so I expect you have been taught. However, the Templar did not found a new state. In truth, he restored an ancient dynasty. He did? Long before the Crystal Orthodoxy ruled this land, it was known as the Kingdom of Eternia. In a time 2,400 years past, Eternia was a bountiful land blessed with four distinct seasons. The highlands were not as lofty as they are today. People and ideas flowed freely from other lands. The kings of Eternia were protectors of the Earth Crystal and the Crystal Adventists, ruling in peace for generations. To the west lay the castle of the House of De Rosso, hereditary dukes of Eternia with royal blood in their veins. Relations with the royal family were good, and ever did the kings of Eternia treat the dukes of our house with kindness. In return, the House of De Rosso did faithfully serve generations of Eternian kings. Hmm. Huh. Nice history lesson right there. Okay. Let's continue. Safety ring. If, if there's a safety ring in here, does that mean that um we're gonna be facing something crazy that nullifies death? That really does tell me something. Pretty sure. For the sake of a maybe, so let's equip them on those two. And actually, you don't need that because your defense is already pretty high enough to withstand stuff. Um, I'm gonna put on ring a bell. Now if I dead death. Alright. Let's go. Oop. Just noticed that. Alright, damn it. Hermy shoes. Cool. Are there any monsters in this place or no? I sure thought they were. Oh I didn't put it on. I thought I put it on. What the hell? Alright, it's on. Let's see how we fare in this place. First round wasn't that great, but we might do better. Desperation. Default. Attack. And... Nope, wait, wrong thing. Ooh, I know what I want to actually do, too. Oh. Was there a... Ow, I forget the counter. Ow. Bastards. I forgot all about their stupid counter. It's a dangerous freaking move. Alright, what I wanted to do, though... Let's bring Ring a Bell back real quick. I wanted to mess with Adia's. No. No. Adia's ability. There we go. Um. We're gonna have to take it off because I want that other one on there. Aw, oh, damn it! We don't have enough room for it. That sucks. Alright. We're fine. Because I want it on there. I want the group cast. We're getting group cast all. We'll get a uh, magic attack up, I guess, plus 20. And we'll leave it at that. Alright, let's go. I 
I gotta remember not to attack the wolves with anyone but magic users. Uh, these guys are fine. In fact, I'm gonna save the magic users and just attack them with, uh, you know, the regular group. Default. Ow. There we go. Down for the count. <laughs> Another photo. Or pain painting, I meant. What magnificent vestments. This must be none other than Lord De Rosso. He's gonna keep coming in and give us the history lessons. My ordainment as Cardinal of the Orthodoxy. I was as yet... No. Let us move on to other matters. I was born of the House of De Rosso. Blessed was my youth. My parents showered affection upon me, and upon royal recommendation, I was made a cleric of the Crystal Adventists, the old faith, in my 19th year. I devoted my body and soul to my clerical duties, for king, for kingdom, for faith. Sleep became an oft-missed luxury, but before long, a new tide began sweeping through the Crystal Adventists. There were those who wanted the clergy to control the four crystals of Luxendark, rather than local monarchies and temples. That belief formed the core of the Crystal Orthodoxy. The Eternian royal family, keepers of the Earth Crystal, immediately assented to this new way. I soon found myself appointed to the position of Cardinal in the Orthodoxy. Me, a mere cleric. Cardinal De Rosa. Those were my days of glory. Even now, the mere sound of the then new title is dear to me. The old faith was remade entirely into the Crystal Orthodoxy, and the decision was made to elect a Grand Patriarch to rule. Thereupon, Cardinals throughout the world gathered for a conclave to elect the first Grand Patriarch. Amid the conclave's maelstrom, I was approached by a Cardinal who wished for me to vote for his choice. I suppose it was my youth and sincerity that made me reject the notion out of hand. But that was my downfall, for I was forced from the position of Cardinal by the fraudulently elected Grand Patriarch. I had been but fervent in my beliefs and ideals. What I did, I did only for the Orthodoxy and for the people of this world. The old faith in the Orthodoxy, the kingdom of Eternia and the Duchy, that was all a bit hard to follow. I had... There are no major differences in teachings between the old faith and orthodoxy. They both revere the four crystals. I have heard that the Adventists gave way to the new and truer ideas of the orthodoxy and faded away. No wonder the old faith was abandoned. Yet there is more to the story, for history is not more than accounts to solidify their power. So it was, those who held the reins of power within the Orthodoxy relentlessly pressed for the Adventists' eradication. No one recalls the words of the vanquished if the victorious write them out of history. T I'd been taught that the battle between the two faiths had been fierce, and in its wake, devastation persisting to this day covered all the land. That is an uncharacteristically accurate account for the Orthodoxy. Save for their false reckoning of time. It was after the Orthodoxy had begun ruling the world that the endless conflict with the Adventists began. I should know. For I was there to bear witness firsthand. Lord De Rosso, how could you possibly be that old? He's a vampire. How's that so weird? Lord De Rosso's epic oratory. Ring a bell. He was uh, sawing logs almost the entire time Lord DeRosso was speaking. Sawing logs? She means you were sleeping. Ah, uh, so it was. That obvious? Obvious. You were snoring like a bear. I was. You'll have to forgive me. Even I know that's really rude. That it is. Even if that was an incredibly long bit of oratory. That's right, Ring a bell. You were really rude. I mean, your snoring even woke me up. What? You mean you were sleeping too, Adia? <laughs> I, I gotta admit, I was kinda sleeping too.
I can't help it, alright. Just I, I get tired fast. It's not my fault. Let's actually uh, heal up. Um, ring a bell since he's kind of hurt. Brave, 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 brave. Blizzard, 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 blizzard. Dead. Nice. There's a chest over there. What? The Masa or something like that? Soul of the Masa. That raises intelligence. Magic attack. I don't really have magic attack. That'd probably be good for her. The Soul of the Masa. Well. Yeah, actually, that bit will be good for her, because she's our magic attacker. Alright, you're getting it. Screw it. Boom. Magic attack out the wazoo. That's what I like to see. Alright, I'm going to get an auto going here. So... Boom. Default. I think we can take care of most of these things here easily. Boom, boom, boom. All of them. Just drop them quick. And boom. Hope I'm on the right track. Damn, she ran out of uh, MP quick. Another photo. This one shows a castle in flames. A large army surrounds it. It looks as if it could fall at any moment. Is this not this very castle? See, this is the western corridor right here. There's another castle burning in the distance. It's near where Eternian Central Command is today. So then, that's the Orthodoxy's head temple in flames? Nay, the distant castle in flames belonged to the king of Eternia. And the castle in the four, tis the abode of my family, the house of De Rosso. But why? Why would such a terrible thing... The kingdom of Eternia was suddenly beset by a great host from another land. We would later come to know that it was a four-state coalition sent by order of the Crystal Orthodoxy. They had been told the King of Eternia sought a return to Adventism and was arming for war against the Orthodoxy. The Grand Patriarchy used this fiction to order a great muster of forces from across the lands. Alas, I failed to heed the many warning signs. I rejected the scheming Cardinal's choice for Grand Patriarch. But he succeeded in luring votes from other factions 
and his became the ruling faction of the Grand Patriarchy. It was they who wished to establish Crystal Orthodoxy as the uncontested world religion. Under their orders, the castle of the Eternian King was besieged. It fell in mere weeks. Before long, the Great Host was at the gates of our castle. The water supply was poisoned, and the Orthodoxy's forces drew an ironclad ring around the castle. By then, the castle sheltered not but the elderly, the young, the wounded. There was no hope of resistance. I was forced to sue for peace, even offering my own mother as hostage for the, the commoners who had placed their faith in my family and me, slowly starved to death. It was then that a letter arrived from a man. That man was the Cardinal, who had sought to influence my vote. The Fiend was now the officer in charge of the attack. He wrote that he would not accept my surrender. Such was the hatred he bore for me. Such hatred that he was willing to let countless innocents die. My mother had been murdered. <sighs> Our castle was consumed in flames. That is the painting you see here. How could the Orthodoxy do such a thing? This all reminds me of what happened during the Great Plague. Indeed. Perhaps the Templar and I are not so very different. To be betrayed by what you believe in. To have your family and those you protect murdered. Though we do not see eye to eye. Perhaps it is a shared sorrow that binds us. Wow. That was pretty crazy. Alright. We'll continue on, I guess. This is the fourth floor, right? Yeah, fourth floor. Ah, oh, I forgot that they counter! Dang it. Oh, it's all right. Dang it! I keep forgetting the counter. Ring of Bells is looking like a freaking level 81 crazy person. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, let's go. Dwarven Gloves. Got this. Come on. Take them out. Yes. Okay. Gimme. Hyper bracers. Alright, let's actually uh we'll turn this off just so we can get to the middle area. Check out this other picture. Look, such feet. Ah, though I wish not to remember that day, it is indelibly etched upon my mind. How did you survive? The Orthodoxy lay siege and would accept no surrender. My mother, father, relatives, and my people lay dead. It was then I set our castle ablaze. But as the flames began to lick my body, something slipped into me. Betrayed by the precepts I believed in, was I not bitter? Robbed of my beloved homeland, my dearest of kin, my people, slain. Amid such despair, was I content to simply welcome death? Nay. I heard a voice. Accept me, and I shall grant life everlasting. Though it shall be filled with grief, 
thou shalt have all eternity to wreak vengeance upon thine enemies. Did I forge a dark pact with some fiendish entity that day? Or was it a rebirth yeah, Satan. triggered by a future me reaching back to the past? Panicked upon failing to find my body, the orthodoxy chose to denounce my family and me as ghoulish vampires. Thus have I been living an immortal existence ever since. Then the name Vampire Castle is... A lie that has been perpetrated by the orthodoxy for some 2,400 years. Though it is true I am immortal, I am no vampire. I find the smell of blood too revolting to ever oh, drink it. Okay. Having said that, I have done not to quell the rumors. In truth, I endeavored <laughs> to embellish them. My ability to transform myself into a bat and grow these fangs are the fruits of many years. Long, long years of effort. Tell me, O Vestal of the Wind, what does the Crystal Orthodoxy have to say about the passing of the first Grand Patriarch? He chose the second Grand Patriarch and prayed for peace and the well-being of the faithful as he passed peacefully from this world. <laughs> passed peacefully from this world, you say? I know the truth to be far different. What do you mean? The first Grand Patriarch was assassinated, along with his Archbishop. The man who had been my bane. The assassin himself tells you this. There is no other truth. That was when I forsook this land. Soon after, sightings of the vampire... Ah, uh, so the second patriarch killed the first one to take his place. The Damn, the orthodoxy are some shady bastards. I became a veritable duke of darkness. Forging ties with those bearing hatred toward the orthodoxy and those it had oppressed. I was the enemy of man, the hated and feared vampire. But more than that, I was known as the arch enemy of the orthodoxy. And after some 500 years, a fateful encounter with no. Okay. Dark looking paintings, fire, fierce battles. Battlefield landscape. It represents the long and hard fought war between the Orthodoxy and we denizens of darkness. For 500 years, my thirst for vengeance remained unsated. Ah. It had also been 500 years since the Orthodoxy had been founded. The world was in the midst of an age of seafaring and piracy. Compared to the great exchange of ideas and information, the once hallowed orthodoxy began to lose its luster. The authority of the Grand Patriarch and the orthodoxy itself began to wane. Fearing irrelevancy, the Grand Patriarchy acted rashly to regain its authority. This led to the unusual decision to select a commoner, the gifted young Yulyana for an important task. Yulyana? Sage Yulyana? Yes, indeed. At age 20, the young Yulyana became High Inquisitor of the Crystal Orthodoxy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's hard to believe he ever was young. <laughs> it was no laughing matter, for there was no one more skilled at rooting out enemies of the faith than he. The shadowy ones, those who had been working against the Orthodoxy, were crushed by the host he led. In the several decades that saw him age, I cannot count the number of times we have crossed swords, he and I. In the great battle waged on the Karka Plain, the might of our clashing forces rent the very earth into a vast rift. You mean the rift under Ice and Bridge? In the battle at the foot of Mount Fragmentum, our army smote the mountain to its very roots. 
So that's how that ravine was created. And in the battle fought on the Harina Plain, the once fertile earth was reduced to desolation. The loss of that fertile plain is believed to have ushered in the downfall of the Harina Dynasty. To think any sort of battle could change the face of the earth so. We fought our final battle 1800 years ago on the Norende Heights in the land of Kaldisla. The Norende Heights? That's where the Great Chasm opened up! In the end, Yulyana, High Inquisitor of the Crystal Orthodoxy, utterly defeated me. Lord De Rosso, leader of the Shadows. You were defeated? But you're here with us today! Yes, well, there was more to that final battle than meets the eye. You see, I ceded the glory of victory to young Yulyana that day. I say young in my reckoning, for he was already 100 then. Yulyana returned triumphantly to Eternia with what he claimed to be my remains. What he brought them was not human. And when the Templar attacked the Head Temple 15 years past, it is said they found my tomb deep underground. Ever dreading the darkness and my return, the Orthodoxy kept those duplicitous remains under Arcane Seal for over 1,000 years. Hmm. Tis a tale replete with irony. <laughs> yeah. Is it not? This dude was like the sworn enemy of the Orthodoxy. It's nuts. Looks like people dancing in fire. That is Saint really? Juliana. It didn't look like him. Yes, indeed. No one would mistake such a man for young now. Having put down the blood sucking Lord De Rosso, bane of the Crystal Orthodoxy. He became the first ever commoner to become an archbishop. Perhaps it was a small honor they threw his way, for he was already 101 years old and would not long count among the living. That makes it sound. Damn, your yacht model now must be like, what, 300? Old as hell. The truth is, however, that was when Yuliana's plot was at its most clever. The sage's plot? What was he plotting? He was taking measures to separate you Vestals and the faithful among the people from the Orthodoxy's corruption. After serving some 80 years, he had witnessed firsthand how corrupt the institution had become. Should nothing be done, it would not be long before the putrid poison would do harm to the most innocent of the faith. So it was he vowed to rid the orthodoxy of the source of this poison, the concentration of power. But... For the great feat of defeating me, Yulyana had been made archbishop, but in name only. But such was not key to his plot. Timing was the key. The proper time to separate the Vestals and the Faithful from the Orthodoxy. And just what timing would that be? The great upthrust of the Eternian Highlands. At the time, the Highlands were not so formidable as they are today, but a colossal movement of earth and rock thrust the Highlands to lofty heights, thereby isolating Eternia from the world. Hold on a moment. He was waiting for the earth to move? How could he have known when such an event would take place? I shall tell you in time. For now, I will say this. Yulyana bided his time till the orthodoxy was cut off from the world. And at last, it happened. The Highlands ringing Eternia did thrust up to about half its height. The orthodoxy ruled Eternia now found itself completely isolated. For this was an age preceding Damn. the airship. So he made... He, he's the one that pretty much cause Eternia to be isolated from the rest of the world unless you have an airship and back then they didn't have any so he cut off the orthodoxies like one of their strengths and 
while the Earth Crystal remained in their keep. Control of the crystals of fire, water, and wind was returned to their respective temples. This, what you believe to be the true form of crystallism, is the fruit of Yoyana's efforts. That was the Sage's doing? I won't ever call him a miserable old lech again. Sage! Wow. The Sage is awesome. Okay. Seventh floor. I can see him back there waiting for me. What is that glowing jewel like object? I could swear I've seen something like that before. I believe you have seen a similar sight countless times. It is known as an asterisk. An asterisk? As in those objects we possess? Yes, indeed. The second stage in Yulyana's plot against the Orthodoxy's authority was to deprive them of the power to grant vocations. Grant vocations? I'm afraid I don't follow. Before Yulyana intervened, special approval was required to change vocations within the Crystal Orthodoxy. In this way, the institution grew rich through fat profits they called alms. Oh, so the Orthodoxy cornered the job market and the fees to participate therein. In layman's terms, yes. But Yulyana exposed this fact before the reigning Grand Patriarch. It was then that Yulyana approached panicked high officials and the Grand Patriarch himself with a proposal of pure genius. He showed them a stone known as an asterisk, saying the granting of vocation should be based on it, overseen by the Orthodoxy. Those who sought such vocations would apply to the Orthodoxy and pay a fair price. Anyone with the means to pay could thus learn a new job. That's no different from the old system where people had to pay alms. No different indeed. But the Grand Patriarch and his officials had not but the material profits of the Orthodoxy in mind. Hence, they accepted Yulyana's proposal without question, even appointing him to the important position of overseeing the new asterisk system. I fail to see how that really changed anything. Well... It did far more than you would guess, for he was the only one who knew how to make the asterisk stones. Why that wild wow. old fox? So it was Yulyana robbed the orthodoxy of its authority to grant jobs and took it for himself. What of the orthodoxy's profits? Wouldn't they demand Yulyana transfer the proceeds to their coffers? Yulyana was long gone. Abandoning the seat of Archbishop, he fled with his knowledge of the Asterisk craft. He also took arms and armor the Orthodoxy had seized from around the world. Items of such power that their use was forbidden. He took them all and sealed them away in a hidden location. They now lie secreted away against the day the Orthodoxy's tyranny or some other impending doom threatens the people. He then hid himself in Yulyana Woods until those who knew him reached the end of their natural lives. But that did not take long, for I led the forces of the shadows. To I had always believed the Crystal Orthodoxy required not but the Crystals, the Vestals, and the Faithful. With the institution free of corruption, I returned to my homeland of Eternia after a 700-year absence. Where my family's castle once stood, I built a fortress of ice from whence I have been watching over the Orthodoxy's head temple. Meanwhile, Yulyana retired to that land to tend to the Vestals. But you know of that better than I. Say Yulyana. Damn. What a past, man. Okay. Take it. Lilith's rod. Okay. Thanks, buddy. I 
I commend you for making it this far. Oh, no more paintings? The final painting lies beyond this throne. I shall reveal it to you if you defeat me in battle. What? The last test is a test of strength. I shall only reveal the painting to those whom I deem worthy. One might also say that there is no need for those who are unworthy to lay their eyes upon it. Uh -uh. But be forewarned, I am a formidable foe. I trust you are well Not prepared. at all. But, eh. Let's do it. Damn. Look at him. Default up. Ow. I should have known he was a dark user. I don't know why I didn't put anything to stop that. Yeah, I, I haven't set up my team right. I don't know if I got to do this again, but... Eh. Alright, sacrifice. Attack him. Pazaga. Fire guy. Stole my BP, didn't he? Pretty sure he did. Radiant Blast. We're never fast enough to hit him. That's the problem. Oops. Wow. That thing hurts us hard. Alright guys, uh, attempt number two. Hopefully this works out. <laughs> uh, turbo Ether on yes. Continue the onslaught, targeting strikes. Fire gun. Ah. 
grave up. No, actually, you don't need to brave up. Um, arise, Dia. And then again. Should block that nicely. Okay. Kirida, Agnes. Uh, you have your special. Oh. Maximum draw. I saved this for you. Right now, Ring of Bell is my big damage dealer in this battle. Ow. Still return. Alright. Targeting strike. And with piercing bolt. I wish Tiz was faster. Tiz isn't fast. And this is what's causing a pretty big uh, hit on our attacks here. Ow, oh, and making him be able to do that. Her back. Crap. We, we probably won't make this. Um, this is for the entire party. Party, do it. Uh, attack. There we go. I should keep us up. And we're in part again. I didn't want to use that, but this dude deserved that, I think, at least. Alright. Let's see if I have anybody that can do a pretty strong hit on him. I wish I had Star Lord again. Nobody here can really do a really good hit. That I got. Godspeed Strike, I guess. I'll try that. Uh, Attack. Attack. Oh, something. Ah, oh, you really stole a turn from me. I do not need that. Give that to you. Ah, he stole the turn. Stop stealing our turns, damn it. This is gonna hurt. Nah. I knew that hurt. Rampart. Kiraga. All of us. Brave up. So you can uh, holy your bow. Targeting. Piercing bolt. Good luck! We're good, we're good. This is working. This tactic is working. Oh, uh, stop doing that, please. Uh, default. Maximum draw. Fire guy. Get lost! We still have Rampart on us, right? We can survive his hit. Yes. Rampart again. Targeting. Fire guy. Get him. Default. Ah. Uh. Come on. Block. You love stealing turns, don't you? 
Lucky she had some to spare. Ah! Rampart was lost. Though she, she saw set to heal us back up into tip top condition. Kyraga. Beat him! Oh, there you go, guys. The immortal Lester de Rosso has been defeated. There you go, guys. Get a... Get, um... A Templar to a high enough level where they can do Rampart. You can block his uh, all his moves for at least his deadly ones. Pretty much. And uh, have a good healer on your side. You'll get by this quick. Got a Mega Elixir. Oh, so I got back what I lost. <laughs> and we have the Vampire Asterisk. The Vampire has a cool uh, uh, master attack G called Genome Drain, I think. Right? I think that's the master attack. But it can, like, steal moves. It favors daggers, rods, and staves. Charm. I'm gonna see if I can level up the Vampire, but... I'm not sure if I'm going to use it yet, but, yeah, we'll figure out. We did it! Let's see what the last painting was, and what he has to say. I am a man of my word. Behold, the final painting. Okay. Well, first, behold some healing powers. Boom. Boom. Final painting. This painting. It is the angel descended from the heavens during my final battle against Juliana. An angel? When we last did battle 1800 years ago, the battle raged 100 days. The mountains of Norende rent asunder, knowing the battle was reaching its end. I mustered the last of my strength to cast my greatest of spells. As my final attack surged forth, the angel did descend from the skies over Norende. Are you sure it was an angel? Verily so, for there are no other words to describe her. For a moment, Yolgana and I stood captivated. Before we realized it, our struggle was forgotten. We both tended to the angel, but the angel lost her light. Her wings were shattered and her body torn asunder. There seemed little hope she would live. When she came to her senses, she trembled with fear. Yet with little remaining strength in her body, she made unto us an appeal. What appeal? What did the angel say to you? Here, she passed from this world. She slipped in and out of consciousness over many a day. In between ever-growing periods of unconsciousness, it was all she could do to mutter incoherently. A trap most vile, such a fool am I, the warriors of light, if it's not too late. These she would repeat over and over. Warriors of light. When she did come to her senses, she would speak of the calamity that had befallen her. She spoke of how Luxendark was on the brink of doom, and spoke with precision of the events that has heralded its coming. She herself was surprised to find that she knew of details of our past, and events of the future as well. The struggle between the old faith and orthodoxy, the tragedy that would befall my family, my immortality, even events of the distant future. The distant future? Yes. For the angel spoke of events that have not come to pass even now. Events that await you in your future. She told of a bringer of evil who would appear in the guise of one oh, friend crap. to the Vestals and seduce them into unleashing chaos in the name of awakening the crystals. This evil one would destroy Luxendark by piercing the boundary that protects this world, and the opening of a great rift that sunders the earth shall herald its coming. The great chasm. The angel told of many other omens ere the great chasm would open. 
the light of earth shall raise up the north, and a deathly plague shall cover all the lands. Then shall a great rift rend the earth. She then entrusted me with a certain task, one that only an immortal such as I could fulfill. What sort of task could only an immortal fulfill? That I cannot say, for she swore me to secrecy, but thereupon she quietly passed from this world. For three days and three nights, my former mortal enemy Yulyana and I spoke of what had transpired. Ultimately, we vowed to join forces to prepare for the coming doom of which the Angel had foretold. Wow. Alright, we did it. Um, and with that, and the new vampire asterisk, I'll see you guys later on the next part. We take on on Victor and Victoria and uh, the Templar brave again uh, I'm gonna see if I can fit that all into the, that one part we've also got all of the jobs except for one whatever that is I don't know what that is but we don't got it um, I will see you guys later bye bye